Welcome back to a new episode of The New Unfiltered. For those of you tuning in, I'm super hyped about this. I did 183 episodes prior to where I am now. Uh, This is the podcast that helped me land a show on Radio Disney. But before Disney, I was all about interviewing entrepreneurs and talking about startup life and the culture behind it. And I stopped doing that for a bit to kind of build another company. So I'm super excited right now to be back interviewing incredible founders. One in particular I have today who I met really randomly (laughs) at a Tech Week party that I went to solely for the food. It had nothing to do with Tech Week. I second that. Um, The hospitality event. Nothing to do with Tech Week. And the food was fucking phenomenal, aka in um, West Hollywood. But this is totally irrelevant to Parham. You are amazing. You are the co-founder of Bound Delivery. Uh, Immediately when I met you, I just adored you. I didn't even know you were an entrepreneur. And then we realized we had like mutual friends and that you had started to build this phenomenal company. So thanks for number one, being here today. Thank Um, you for having me. Are you kidding me? I think real recognize real. And it's the same. Once we met at that cheese board, it was was love at first sight. (laughs) And it's so funny because literally like no one ever goes to those events in LA because no one eats. Right. Mm -hmm. And I also think it's so important because both you and I, which is like a pro tip for all founders, both you and I were there alone. Mm -hmm. So making... Any kind of talk, small talk with another founder, especially while you're alone, I believe is a really big deal. It can yeah. be really intimidating. Sure. So the fact that we just gravitated towards one another and I don't even know what the first line oh was God. or whether it was about the cheese or something one of us was wearing. Did you go there because you wanted to make a connection? Did you go there because it was just like on the list or you liked the building? I had a, I knew about the building mm-hmm. and I had a list of tech events that I wanted to go check yeah. out. And I almost didn't go to that one, truthfully, because I thought to myself, this is so outside of my scope of work. But never say never, and any opportunity I get, I go, especially something like Tech Week, right? I try to go to as many events as I could. So I originally walked in, and there wasn't too many people at the time, and I forgot something in my car. So I ran back out to my car, and I thought, they definitely think I'm ditching the event. And then when I got to my car, I thought to myself, is it worth it? Do I need to go back in? There wasn't that many people. I'm a little nervous. I came alone. I said, forget it. I got to go back in. I'm already here. I'll give myself like 10 minutes. Of course. And then I ended up meeting, first of all, I met another gentleman who ended up sharing so many mutual friends with, who I saw at an SVB event after. And then after meeting you, I ran into one of your good friends at the SVB event after that as well. Yes. So it's such a small world. It's such a small world and it's so serendipitous because I also am not really a people person. Um, and I get really intimidated talking to people at these events, especially in LA, because I find everyone is so fake. Mm-hmm. So uh, I just think this is super cool. But what is Bound? I mean, how did you start this? You didn't go to college. Certainly, certainly, yeah. Thank you for asking. So I indeed did not go to college. I went to community college for a few semesters before I dropped out. Woo! Give it to me. I'll speak a little bit more on that later. Um, Bound is a last mile delivery solution. Mm-hmm. Our software connects an exclusive network of individuals, businesses, with users, um, drivers to power same-day logistics. Essentially, we are rideshare, but for deliveries. We work with a lot of talent-driven and owned brands. And going back to um, not going to college, I struggled a lot in high school. My friends actually had bets on me that I wasn't even going to graduate high school. I had a bunch of truancies. And um, when a day before graduation came and I get a call from my counselor and she says, Parham, you're five credits short and you can't walk tomorrow. The only way that you'll be able to walk is if you go to the continuation school down the street and you have to pass a test. Mm -hmm. You pass this test, you'll get your five credits, you'll pass Mm -hmm. and you'll get to walk. If not, you're not walking. What an absolute embarrassment. And... Besides that, my parents' goal was for me to go to college, to become a doctor, to be an attorney, something, or at least have a degree, right? But I just knew that in my heart, that wasn't the route for me. And I feel there's so many successful people out there without a degree, and you don't need a degree to uh, be successful. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where it all started. 
So I love Found, and I know you guys have not launched in Austin. So quite frankly, I made so many friends at Tech Weekend City about moving my home base back to LA. Please. But that being said, I always struggle. My issue is like I can never find someone to drop things off, pick things up, get it around. Mm -hmm. uh, and I find like TaskRabbit, Handy, these are good, but you also have to like schedule it far out. There's like hourly requirements. So what is the difference with Bound? Right, so we're kind of an anytime, anywhere, on demand, anywhere, I mean, Los Angeles currently. We are working on a few very exciting partnerships that I cannot speak of yet, but um, once, not when, those partnerships are closed, we will be able to scale nationwide. So that is uh, really exciting for us. Mm -hmm. Essentially, with Bound, you can um, transport items locally same day. We go all the way from Montecito, um, San Francisco, all the way down to San Diego. It can be a, something as small as a hard drive or your set of keys, or it could be uh, for a brand. Therefore, we work with a lot of brands that do product launches, mm -hmm. right? We actually work with a lot of celebrity-owned and driven brands that do product launches. So when they're launching a new product, they all of a sudden have 100 items that need to get delivered across town to all of their friends and family. How are they going to do that? You can't really use FedEx or UPS because you have to individually create um, labels. With that being said, also, um, the items might be fragile. There might be separate pieces. You don't want the item to show up at the recipient's house in a box that no. they have to unbox. So we're more that elevated premium, um, so say, um, courier service, messenger courier service. And how did you get the idea? Because you're what, 20? I'm 27. I'm turning 28 August 7th. <gasps> I'm so old. Birthday. Thank you. A Leo, a Leo. Oh my God, I literally <laughs> so, have Leo tattooed on my bike. That's really? my nephew's name. Yeah. Oh, I'm obsessed. Oh, that's so great. It's a good name. Yeah. Usually, anytime someone asks me what my zodiac sign is, I say, what do you think? Hmm. And they say, um, they say Leo. So <laughs> <laughs> the way we came up with Bound was my co-founder and I, Harper, who I've known since the sixth grade, yeah. were working at an agency in West we were calling, she was on the business development side and I was on the celebrity seating side. We were calling messengers day in and day out. The level of service we were receiving was just very outdated. It was very old school. It was honestly the cabs before Ubers. Yeah. You never knew when the driver was gonna come. You never knew how much it was gonna be. You couldn't track them. If there was a problem, they'd have to call headquarters. Excuse me, you had to call headquarters and then they would call the driver. It was just this back and forth game. So we looked at each other one day and said, there has got to be a way to modernize this experience and make it easier. Mm -hmm. So we set out to execute a business plan. And then unfortunately, during that time, both of us lost um, someone super dear to us, my grandmother, and also Harper's father. Mm -hmm. So this was almost thank you a tribute to them because we promised them that we were going to do this and be successful. So there certainly wasn't any backing down after that. And then once again, unfortunately, but honestly, fortunately for us, the pandemic hit. And our first day of inception was March of 2020. Uh -oh. I have a video on my phone. It's the first day of pandemic when you thought that you were going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, step outside and catch COVID. Yeah. Nobody knew what COVID was. So we geared up and Harper and I both got on the road along with my brother and we just started powering these deliveries. And to add on to that, the agency that we worked for, they really got us out there and said, you guys should get out there and beta launch mm. and we'll be your first client. It was oh. very unconventional because that's not the way we had originally planned to start. How'd you get that job if you didn't really go to college? Certainly. Uh, so I think your network is your net worth. And that specific job I actually got through my co-founder, Harper. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't even an employee of that company. I was interning at that company. I had two other jobs at the time. And going back to, you know, never saying no to an opportunity, there was a mixer that was going on and Harper invited me to the mixer and said, come, this is a great, you know, networking event. Like I said, I had two other jobs at the time. I went to this uh, mixer and it just so happened that one of the team members for the division I was working for had quit that day. Mm -hmm. They had a huge mailer project the next day. So the CEO of the company looked at me and said, basically took a chance on me and said, we need help. Could you step in? And I said, of course, I'll, I'll make the time. I'll make myself available. You know, I'll move some things around and I'll come in. 
So I did that and it just started with that. And then I was there for a handful of months, so much so that they actually offered me a position there. But since I had a few other things that I was juggling and then of course then bound, I wasn't able to take that uh, full time position there, but they really uh, helped us and launched us. Did you ever have people asking you, and I'm assuming it's probably yes, but like, oh, what's your, you know, your background or where did you go to college to get jobs before you dove into entrepreneurship? Right. Yeah. And I feel that it's looked down upon, right? If you don't have a college degree, Mm -hmm. you can't get certain jobs. And to me, that's really frustrating because even during high school, and I speak to my friends um, who are in college, nobody taught them how to write a check. The only time that I learned how to write a check was in the third grade. Yet we learned how to write cursive in, excuse me, elementary school, middle school. I don't know how many people use cursive. But these days, but not too much, right? And even filing taxes, which legally you need to file your taxes every year. What's up with that? Why is nobody teaching anybody how, that you need to file taxes? taxes are, right? How to get a mortgage, how to open a credit mm-hmm. card. None of these things are taught um, in even high school. I mean, this is college is besides the point. Let's talk about high school. These are some core um, tools that we need, skill set that we need to take on every day and we're not taught that during high school so you go on to college and maybe you choose a class that you know has that but um not for most no and there's so many things in high school i feel like they lack on teaching you but Mm -hmm. even one of the reasons i didn't go to college is because i couldn't understand how i would get into so much debt and maybe if my parents had been like we have the money yeah i would have been like okay like i'll go i mean i didn't also get into any school that i applied for Mm -hmm. fuck you nyu (laughs) Uh, but had i had them be like we'll give you the money sure maybe i would have but going through the motions now like working with colleges and also having so many friends who have gone to college it doesn't seem like they're even really learning anything more than what you learn by doing it you know what i mean i couldn't agree with you more i think going to college is a privilege nothing i look down on but it really is a privilege for people to go to college because Had I gone to college, what would have been the difference? Then I would have moved on to launch bound. Actually, I probably would have not launched bound at that point because that opportunity would have been gone. So therefore, I'm now hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, right? I would have had to take out loans. And to me, that wasn't a path that I wanted to go down. Now, don't get me wrong. If you want to be a scientist, you want to be a doctor, you You want to be an attorney, you need it. I get it. There's some scopes of work that you do need to go to college. But I think for the... I don't like the word average, but for maybe someone every day or a business owner, college isn't necessarily the be all. No. Just because you have a degree, there's so many people that have a degree from Harvard yeah. that are out of work. I know. Right? It's crazy. Yeah. I used to um, live with this guy in Boston. Um, he was like definitely looking back a serial killer, but he <laughs> had gone to Harvard, but he also was like working as a um, like the mopper guy at the right? schools. It was just like weird. And I remember mm-hmm. even thinking then, like, I don't understand why did you go to school and this is what you're doing. Right. But when I asked you what you wanted to talk about, uh, which I always like to ask any guests, like, is there one thing you want to talk about? And you said in particular bootstrapping. Mm-hmm. So Bound is very niche and it's in LA right now. And I think what's super dope about it is it reminds me kind of in the way that like Rent the Runway started is it's like a very specific problem for a very specific demographic. And that's how you really build, I find, super successful companies is you're able to have that seriously clear product market fit early on. Uh, And so when you were working at this other job, at what moment did you have this idea for Bound? Was it you and Harper together one day were like, we have the idea? Right. So when we came up, when we finally, we looked at each other and it clicked, like, we want to do this, let's make this something. We set out to execute our business plan, as I mentioned. And then it so happened that the same company, the pandemic hit, Mm -hmm. and they didn't trust anybody else with their deliveries. It was the first day of the pandemic. And they said, what are we going to call them? Just the average messenger service. You know, these recipients aren't going to allow anyone near their home. So that's where they really chose us and took a chance on us. We also were going to launch our apps before anything. We were going to do it the conventional way. We wanted to get out there, fundraise, launch our apps, and then start taking clients. So the fact that we had no software even, we were using Google Spreadsheets and Google Forms. Mm -hmm. We would onboard drivers via text message, via email, have the drivers have a Google Sheets with all of their deliveries that we would copy and paste (gasps) once we texted them saying, are you able to accept this delivery? 
And then our clients were submitting Google Forms to submit their orders. And yeah. then we would go back manually on Google Maps, route all of these orders, and send them an invoice at the end of the month. And at the time, we didn't even have a payment processor. So there was a few customers at first were like, oh, we just want you to use the service, right? Our first ever customer, we had them email in their order. And they go, okay, how do I pay you? And then Harper and I look at each other and say, we need a payment yeah. processor. Oh, gosh. Which one did you guys end up using? We ended up using Stripe. Stripe, yeah. Stripe is amazing. I actually yeah. did go to the Stripe uh, Sessions Conference oh, cool. just last uh, year. Okay. I believe it may have been last um, September. Okay. Stripe goes all out, but yeah. they really have so many robust features. Sure. I didn't even know there's a uh, feature that they have called Stripe Atlas. Had I known, we would have used that to incorporate our business. Oh. I believe you can incorporate your business for only $400. Wow, no way. Stripe in Atlas. Delaware? In Delaware. In Delaware. Yes. Delaware okay. C-Corp. Uh, but we would have spared so no. much legal uh, fees had we uh, done, done that. that. But that's why I go to so many of these pop-ups, networking events, conventions, because I genuinely learn a plethora of knowledge when I attend these. And on top of it, meet so many so amazing many people. people yourself. Yeah, thank you. Same to you. Uh, even though networking can sometimes be a bit intimidating, and especially like Tech Week. I mean, that was like a very intense. I know you haven't been to South By yet either, nope. right? So I'm going to get that's, you there yes, next that's year. that's next on my list. But it's a very, like, intimidating experience mm -hmm. sometimes to go into those places with, like, already successful entrepreneurs, which is, like, obviously that's what we both are too. But I think imposter syndrome is such a big part of this. Uh, okay, so you guys, you have this idea, and you start, you're using, like, Google Sheets and everything. Did you immediately become, you said a C-Corp, so is that what you guys are? Right, yeah, yeah. We are a Delaware C-Corp, okay. right, and... Um, just going on to when we just first launched and all of that, we were recruiting our, we call our driver's bounders. Mm -hmm. It was all friends and family. And at the time, a lot of the kids didn't have, or a lot of the young adults, teens, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> didn't have jobs because it was during the pandemic. Yeah. So all of our friends, our friends' parents, we have them How are all you getting them the to road. do this? Well, it, they didn't have jobs. And I always say, never take another unpaid drive oh, again. Yeah, that's You're driving from West Hollywood to the Palisades. Great, take a bound while you're doing it and yeah. you'll make some money. Of course. So we would just reach out to like all of our contacts, Fun. Harper's College uh, friends, our high school friends, middle school friends. So there was times that we would make the joke that it was a reunion yeah. at these um, projects <laughs> when all of the uh, s former students or our friends, our family would come to pick up these deliveries. But we were working with such huge clients yeah. and to mention all of our clients have been word of mouth, which I is, I think, the biggest blessing. And I think that really uh, shows to a business and the service that they are able to provide. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. Is like, how did you get that first client? So right. it seems like you guys made a lot of connections at your job. So just like being in the industry, being in LA in general, I'm assuming right. you were able to kind of cultivate that community. Right. So the, uh, the agency that uh, both Harper and I worked um, uh, definitely connected us with a lot of brands and brands that they represent. But also, even to this day, I, we're a little over three and a half years in, Harper and I are still on the road almost every day, if not every other day. So our senders and our recipients are able to see our faces and they recognize you know, and associate that with the brand and the level of professionalism. So there's so many times that we'll go and they say, wow, what is this awesome service? Harper and I, like, you know, we're actually we're the co-founders of mm -hmm. uh, Bound and a little bit more about us. We'd love for you to check us out. And then soon enough, they become a customer. And then soon enough, they tell another friend. Yeah. That's why I said, like, the niche thing about mm -hmm. it is that, like, it, there's so many opportunities for it to expand. But you really were able to find that original demographic of people who really need this service. Right. And especially in L.A. Like, I know I told you I, like, need this in Austin. But in L.A., the industry, I mean, this is something that's so necessary so back to the bootstrapping part then, how did you, like, I mean, do you need money to start this kind of a company? I guess all you really need is a car. <laughs> all you need is Google. Yeah. Uh, we definitely, you definitely need a car, uh -huh. right? Um, Harper and I had our jobs at the time that we uh, left fairly after, but we were still, you know, in our jobs, I believe, for the first six months until it really got to the point that we just couldn't um, So in six months, you were able to scale it that fast? Both, yes. That's wild. And uh, because all the money that we were, of course, I mean, to be 100% transparent here, Harper and I didn't even pay ourselves salary for mm -hmm. the first two and a half years. Yeah. We just recently started paying ourselves salary. So, um, yeah, really, I mean, I feel that if you can bootstrap a company, you can do anything. And we're so scrappy sure. and we really 
can you stretch a uh, dollar? But going back to how we did it, we just kept reinvesting all the revenue back into the company because it was a service. If it was a product, it'd be a little different because you need upfront capital to, you know, make a product. But since it's a service, someone requests a delivery, great, I'm hopping on the road, I'm gonna fulfill that delivery for you, right? 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 30 bucks. And then during that time, we were looking for, it kind of went the other opposite way, but we wanted to find our software developers, build the platform, yeah. and then go to um, go to market. But we ended up the opposite. So during that time, we were also developing the app. And our app took a, around a year and a half to fully build. Okay. And it's expensive. I, and it yes. is so expensive. We have three different apps. We have a mobile app. Excuse me. We have two mobile apps and a back-end app where we're able to manage all the orders. So our customers have yeah. an app and our drivers have an app, similar, once again, to Rideshare. And not only that, but there's so many lessons that, right, even if I went to college, they would have not taught me this. <laughs> the first development, right, the first development agency we went with, we didn't have the funds to hire in-house, right, to hire a software engineer yeah. for $100,000, $200,000 in-house. So the first development agency we went with, unfortunately, over-promised and under-delivered. So within the first three weeks, the deliverables we were receiving weren't that of what yeah. they had promised. And for legal reasons, I really can only speak on it so much too, but uh, we had to terminate our contract with them, which then brought on a whole slew of other charges, including legal charges. So we then had to find a whole legal team. Yeah. So knock on wood, now we're well equipped with a legal team, but that was a very, um, that set us back definitely um, some time. But I'm not the only person that has encountered that. I know a handful of uh, other people that oh, yeah, also, so yeah. Was that one of those moments where you were like, can I keep doing this? Like, is this gonna work? Right, Harper and I looked at each other and said, like, can we get up from this? Yeah. But really my life motto is fall down seven times, get up eight. Oh. Oh, that is my number one thing, and it has been since high school. You're going to fail, you're going to fail, and you're going to fail, but you're going to get up, and that one time is going to be it. I'm making a collection in my head of quotes, like Parham's quote, starting the, the network. I know, I feel like it's your so... Your network is so, your net worth. Yes, and this one, so cliche. I don't know if you're taking them from somewhere else or you're coming up with them. I listen to a lot of podcasts, okay. so they do come to me from time okay. and time, but those are the ones that really resonate. Okay. So looking back at how you have started Bound mm -hmm. and made it into a success so far, taking no outside capital, mm -hmm. what do you attribute that to? I think one being our resilience, mm -hmm. that is huge. Also, I have to give credits to the friends and family. As I mentioned before, we've had so many friends and family on the road. My father, Harper's mother, all of my brother, all of our friends, you know, there's times that we're in a pinch and Harper and I are doing another delivery or are on a call yeah. and they'll step in and they'll fulfill the uh, delivery. So I think that is uh, really important, but also just, yeah, kind of going into resilience, just never giving up. And there's always light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. And something that I recently, and I wish I could credit her this one, I, I, it's not me. Um, I was listening to you on TikTok, and uh, this woman was saying, every time you think to yourself, or you have a fear pop into your mind that it's not going to work out, count back from five and say, what happens if it all works out? Mm. And I, I like think that's that. so huge, because yeah. being a founder, and I struggle with a lot of depression and anxiety and ADHD, so many racing thoughts go on through my head on a day-to-day -day basis, that you know, which goes hand-in-hand -hand with imposter syndrome, of course. right? So um, really all of that, um, I believe, just the keep going, we're going to make it, and learning from our lessons and how we can do something better. You're going to fall down. And I think the, uh, it's the founder CEO of Honda. It's like you can make 99 mm -hmm. mistakes, right? But if you make one of them, just needs to be a just success. Oh, just yeah. one. Yeah, it's, it's very true. And that's, I think, the difference between entrepreneurs and people who work for other people mm -hmm. is they're able to fall down and get back up in ways that just take so much grit and resilience. You said that for two years you guys weren't taking any salary. Hell yeah. So how did you pay? Like, what did you eat? We say by the grace of God, I know. Harper and I look at each other to this day and we say, how did we do it? Um, we definitely had a bit of savings from our previous um, jobs. Nothing too crazy, but we really had to cut down on spending. I moved back into my parents' house 
Um, Harper was at her parents for a little bit as well. Yeah, you just cut down on, I mean, even things that are necessities. And it's unfortunate. We live in LA. You look around you. You see all of your friends yeah. and family and the way that people live. But we really, truly live in the 1% here. It's a bubble. And I try to remind myself that each and every day because first and foremost I'm not even born in the states um, I'm from the Middle East I was born in Iran Tehran so I, in my country we don't even have freedom of speech when did you come here How I moved you? to uh, the states when I was three okay and it's unfortunate because I would be enlisted if I go back to my country mm -hmm. so I can't go back because I do have some family members there but um, yeah it is it's you it, it's, it's an ego hit I think right you see all your friends and they might just have even a simple job at a simple cafe but there it looks like they're doing better than you are but also you never know what people are showing isn't no. really you know what they are maybe they're not investing their money maybe they're not spending their money properly maybe they're in a ton of debt so that also is very un motivating because sometimes i even think wow they have a job at so and so and they're living this amazing life and traveling the whole world and there's so many sacrifices that I have to make. I have to miss trips, I have to miss birthdays, I have to miss family gatherings, all for, especially at the time, and even recently, for what, not even a paycheck? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it, it can really get uh, to you, but that's really where um, I think the resilience would probably be the number one word that uh, comes in. Yeah, it's an unspoken territory mm -hmm. with founders, with like having to do these things, and then especially in LA, when people, and that was part of the reason why I got a place in Austin was, I got really sick here of living in that bubble. Uh, I don't know if it's just originally because I'm from the East Coast. Now that I've gotten older, like even being back here at Tech Week, like meeting you, whatever, I feel like I could live here full time again easier now than when I was here naive and like scared and not really knowing anyone. But it is very much a bubble. And I don't know if it's just because the wealth like of people is so high and so unique. Like there are just the lifestyles here are so lavish in comparison to people with millions of dollars and like Houston, Texas, do not do and act and look like the people in LA. Right. But I'm assuming with Bound, I mean, you must see like every, so many different people. We do see it all. And just yeah. being in the entertainment industry in general, right, you really see it all. But if you're able to take a step back and recognize what you have and where you want to be and look at those people and not be envious, but instead be motivated. I have so many friends, so many close friends around me that are so blessed and to me it is beautiful watching that because I aspire to give my yeah. kids that one day and I know I will but I don't come from an envious standpoint I think being envious and greedy are two of the most disgusting uh, qualities one can have oh that's interesting and I mean jealousy is like the root right. of all Great. evil uh, exactly so how do you feel like you've been able to not experience that especially in a place like LA me being so superstitious, I'm going to say my evil eye. <laughs> I uh, have it attached yeah, to Yeah, oh finger, yeah, yeah, let's go. I know, I always have to have real a piece of, real, yeah, yes. that's for sure, the synergy. Um, mm -hmm. I always have to have an evil eye on me at all times. Yeah. And my mom, when I go home, like every week, she'll uh, burn this, it's called it's called Espan, but okay. it's sage okay. for me. And it's just kind of like to ward off evil mm -hmm. or a bad eye, um, per se. But I think just being a good person. Person. That's all you can do yeah. and be humble and share your knowledge with others and want to help. I'm the first to, I sometimes, it's actually a disfavor to myself. I'll put others before me. And, you know, if a friend needs a job, great, let me connect you to everybody I know in that industry for you to get a job. I may not even make a salary myself, but I'll get you a six-figure salary. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I don't mind that. And I think if you can do that and show people, like, who you really are and where your heart lies... It's karma. Then yeah. good things will come to you. And I good things also come to those who wait. Agreed. I think that's what I initially vibed with so much about you is I could just tell, like, you're so authentic. And a lot of times, in L.A. especially, people are so nice, but it's so fake. Mm -hmm. And I didn't find that with you. So, I don't know. I guess you would say your mother has done a very good job <laughs> yeah. at raising you. But I'm really curious the dynamic with your co-founder. Because having a co-founder is beyond difficult. So, how totally. has that been? Yeah, that's a very good question. So... As I mentioned, we have been friends since the sixth grade. We hang out in the same friend circle as well. We used to live with one another at one point during the pandemic, uh -huh. and we would work with one another every single day. For anybody, that is just a lot. So uh, we've been able to set boundaries, and I think boundaries, <laughs> that's the number one um, yeah. uh, 
the number one thing that's important is the boundaries. We have a, a call in the morning and a call in the evening. Our call in the morning is a daily huddle and our call in the evening Just is a closing circle, right? Yeah. And then we have other calls with our uh, yeah. internal team, legal team, right? All the marketing and then our interns and whatnot. So, uh, but those are just us time and we communicate uh, with, on Slack throughout the day. So our personal phones are off limit. We don't call each other. We don't text each other. If I message about work whatsoever, we're only emailing or slacking or doing a huddle um, on Google Meet. And I think just setting those boundaries is uh, number one. And then of course, you know, it can affect your uh, friendship when you're with someone every day yeah. and you get frustrated and you're both anxious, and especially bootstrapping a company. You, I mean, any company, you don't know what's next, right? But I wouldn't want to have it any other way. If I were to do it all over again, I would still do it with uh, the same person because you also have that comfortability that, okay, you might be having an off day. You know you can wake yeah. up and be honest with your co-founder as opposed to if I met my co-founder through, you know, a, let's say, y, YC uh, school matching kit. School matching kit's called YC school. Oh, I yeah. didn't know they had that. Yeah, YC has this awesome um, yeah. matching oh, uh, platform to be able to find founders or yeah. excuse me other co-founders then I might be nervous to express certain ways I feel or I might you know mm -hmm. there's always compromise but you maybe don't feel as authentically yourself so I can say that uh, my co-founder and I and you know it, it takes time but especially after these uh, three years we've really uh, nailed it down and she has her incredible skill set and her level of expertise that she brings to the table and it's the same um, for me and what I do so we're really able to divide and conquer because two heads are two minds are better than of one. Course. And why have a co-founder if you're both going to be doing yeah. the same thing, right? That's counterproductive. I learned so much through my experience having one, and I would definitely say being aware of what your strengths and your weaknesses are up front is mm -hmm. a very valuable thing. I mean, I kind of look back on that experience and wish I had maybe been more like clear and let that be a leading factor of like what I was really good at in this particular company. But I also think it's really hard, right, when there's only you two. All, you're doing the finances, you're doing all of like da da da, and it's like things just end up you're doing everything, and it's not ideal until it's ideal, right? Exactly, and that's another thing that, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe some people don't see. They think you're gonna launch a company, oh, it's all glamour, you get to work less. No, it's the polar opposite. opposite. I do deliveries probably from nine to five, and then yeah. I get on my computer from five to nine yeah. answering emails that I couldn't have, yeah, of course. During, um, the day and you know it gets frustrating as well right when especially you have like to both you and your co-founder you're on the road you get exhausted and you burn out a little bit of it for us i will say was different because we launched during the pandemic so it was kind of nice not having the pressure of let's go out tonight let's go to dinner you know everyone was cooped up so my co-founder and i were just working at home every yeah. night together and now that you know the pandemic is I can officially say hopefully the pandemic is over. Yeah, right? That's exactly. not a controversial statement. No. Uh, now we'll go to co-working spaces. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll have specific days that we work together and then we'll have uh, our video calls sure. just and we'll meet with clients. It's just the more healthier way. But I do believe in, I think working just remote, uh, you don't get optimal results no. with a team. No. You do need to have those IRL experiences. Even something like this podcast, I'm sure probably during the pandemic, right? Did you have to uh, Yeah, during the pandemic, I think I was... I don't know. I think, excuse me, I think I was doing mine during the pandemic and it was all Zoom and it sucked. It's just a whole, you can't catch it a vibe. No. Honestly, I'd be a whole different person I right know. now if you were talking to, excuse me, talking to me through the lens yeah. of the camera. How can I pick it's up your vibe? Bad. How can we interact? It just feels so artificial. Of course. And especially even with like calls with investors we take, you know, our number one thing is let's meet in person. Yeah. We're happy to come to you, but let's meet in person so we can, you know, because at the end of the day, an investor is investing in you. you. Sure, the idea is great, but you're who's going to take. Yeah, yeah, you're the brain behind it. You're who's going to take mm -hmm. this idea from here to here. Of course, uh, you say it perfectly. Where do you envision Bound going? Like, what is your goal? I mean, I hate when people are like, "What's your five-year plan?" But like, if you could see this company being the next this X Y Z, what would you say? Right, we would want to be. Um, first, I want to say everyone's, but maybe a. We also say we're the Raya of delivery services, <laughs> right? Because there's Bumble, there's um, yeah. Tinder. So an elevated group of yeah. brands and individuals go to um, delivery service. Mm -hmm. Love it. 
Love, love, love it. Uh, where can everyone find out more about Bound? Yeah, um, you can follow Bound on Instagram. We post all of the cool, cool brands that we work uh-huh. with at Bound. I can't wait to hear about these um, the partnerships. Oh, I know. Off air, oh, off air. Yeah. I'll tell you uh, those. Okay, Bound um, Delivery. Yeah, at Bound Delivery. So that's B O U N D D E L I V E R Y. That's across the board. So LinkedIn and Twitter as well. TikTok's in the making, so that's going to come for us um, next. And then personally for me, it's Parham, P-A-R-H-A-M-M-M-M. So it's Parham, (laughs) the four M's. And fun fact, I am today I'm going to post it. I have it queued up, but um, I'm doing a day in the life of a startup founder to just, you know, take continue the conversation and take, you know, what I'm really Mm -hmm. preaching and show the goods and the bads and the ups and the downs. So I'm going to release that series on uh, TikTok, which I'm very excited for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see it. I have to follow, I, I have to follow you on TikTok. TikTok is like Please. my worst nightmare and my best You're nightmare. great on t- I think I actually follow you on TikTok. I, ha- I don't have content yet, but you know, I, after today I will. I'll, yeah, I'll follow you. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's like hit or miss. I find like startup things. Like I, that's what I would like to say, like the reality. But then that's not what performs well. It's like I'm, a weird thing. Right. So I, that's why I have a love and hate relationship. People want to see the glitz and glam. Yeah, exactly. And I get it. But like it's also the people who... Not everyone has that privilege. So no. the people who are sitting are looking at this like, wow, but I can never obtain that. But they can obtain it. Mm-hmm. So Exactly. You're amazing. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much for having me. It is such an honor to be here. I had so much fun. I could keep talking for another few hours. I, I know. I didn't think I would say that coming into oh, the podcast. Please. And this is my first podcast. I was okay. going to say that at the beginning, but <laughs> it just we just so flow and vibe. Yeah. I didn't get to say it, but yeah, no, I had a tremendous time. You so. did so well. And I, I'm going to start a new page called Parham's Quotes. And oh, I'm going to take all so... of your stolen <laughs> quotes and your you quotes and put them uh, up. Uh, No, but seriously, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for listening to another episode of The New Unfiltered. This podcast airs weekly. Uh, Subscribe. uh, Give it a review. And if there's any founder or super dope person that you want to see me interview, send me a DM on Instagram at Alexa underscore Curtis or to the podcast Instagram page at The New Unfiltered. And I'll see you guys next week for a new episode.